Have you ever wondered where words come from? What are the stories behind the words we use every day? These questions lead us down a fascinating path, a journey to the origins of language. Imagine words as living entities, born from a melting pot of cultures, ideas, and events. They grow, change, and sometimes even die. This evolution of words, their births, lives, and transformations, is the heart of etymology. Etymology is the study of word origins and their evolution over time. It's a detective story of sorts, piecing together the puzzle of our language, tracing back words to their roots, and uncovering how their meanings have shifted over the centuries. But why should we care about etymology? Well, it's more than just an academic exercise. Studying etymology helps us understand the intricate tapestry of languages and cultures. It shows us how languages are not isolated but interconnected, influenced and shaped by each other. It offers insights into our past revealing how our ancestors thought, what they believed, and how they interacted with their world. Now let's shift our focus slightly and talk about cognates. Cognates are like linguistic siblings, words that share the same etymological origin. They're the evidence of the shared heritage of languages. For instance, the English word mother and the German word mutter are cognates. They come from the same linguistic root reflecting the common ancestry of English and German. Cognates are fascinating because they remind us of the interconnectedness of languages. They show us that languages, like people, have relatives. They reveal the shared history of languages, how they've borrowed from each other, and how they've evolved together. So as we begin this journey into the world of words, remember that every word has a story. It's a story of people, of cultures, of the human desire to communicate and connect. Unraveling the stories of words is akin to unfolding a historical map, revealing the intertwined connections of human civilizations. Words are not static, they live, they evolve, and they carry history within their syllables. Every word you've ever spoken, every sentence you've ever read is a link to the past. They are like time travelers, journeying from the mouths of our ancestors to our own, carrying with them tales of conquests, migrations, and cultural exchanges. This is the fascinating world of etymology, the study of word origins and how their meanings have changed over time. Consider the word journey. It takes us back to the old French journey, meaning a day's work or travel. This term in turn descends from the Latin diurnum, a daily allowance for traveling. So when we say journey, we echo the voices of travelers and workers from centuries ago. Now let's talk about how words change. Many factors can influence this evolution like migration, colonization, and cultural exchange. When people move, they carry their language with them. And as they interact with new cultures, their language adapts. For instance, the English language is a melting pot with words borrowed from Latin, Greek, French, and many others. Take the word ketchup, for example. It's an all-American condiment, right? Well, etymologically speaking, ketchup is a globetrotter. The word comes from the Hokkien Chinese word ketsiap, a type of fish sauce. It traveled with traders to Malaysia and Indonesia, where English colonizers encountered it, and voila, ketchup. So, etymology is not just about old books and dusty libraries, it's about understanding our ancestors, their way of life, the paths they traveled and the people they encountered. The word window, for example, comes from the Old Norse vindaga, which means wind eye. This gives us a small glimpse into the lives of the Norse people who lived in windy, harsh climates. Words, in their journey through time and space, become the living testament of our shared human history. So the next time you use a word, think about its journey. It might just have a tale to tell. Just like us, words have relatives too. They have siblings, cousins, and distant relatives spread across different languages. Now let's delve into the world of cognates, those lovely relatives in the grand family tree of words. Cognates are words that share a common etymological origin. They might look or sound similar and they usually carry similar meanings too. They're like long-lost cousins in the vast family tree of words, tracing their lineage back to a common ancestor. Consider the English word mother. It's a word we all know and use but, did you know it has relatives in other languages? In German we find mutter, in Dutch moeder, and in Swedish motor. All these words stem from the same ancient root making them cognates. But cognates aren't just limited to closely related languages. Even languages from different families can share cognates thanks to the intermingling of cultures and languages over centuries. For instance, the English word piano and the Japanese word piano are cognates both borrowed from the Italian word piano. Cognates aren't always obvious though, some are like distant relatives who've changed so much over time that we barely recognize them. Take the English word to and the German word zwei. They don't look or sound alike, do they? 
but trace their lineage far enough back, and you'll find they share the same Proto-Indo-European root, DW8, a testament to their shared ancestry. Exploring cognates is like embarking on a genealogical quest, unearthing connections that span continents and centuries. It shows us that language isn't a static entity, but a living, breathing organism, evolving and adapting over time. It's fascinating to think that a word you use every day could have a sibling or cousin in a language you've never spoken. It's a beautiful reminder of our shared human heritage, embodied in the words we speak. Cognates remind us that languages despite their apparent differences, have shared roots and common origins. So the next time you encounter a new word, take a moment to ponder its family tree. You might just discover a fascinating tale of linguistic kinship. Understanding etymology and cognates is not just an academic exercise, it has practical applications too. Let's dive right in and explore these benefits. One of the most immediate advantages of understanding etymology and cognates is the enhancement of vocabulary. By tracing the roots of a word, its meaning becomes clearer and more nuanced. For instance, the Latin root luke, meaning light, is found in words like lucid, elucidate, and translucent. Recognizing this root can help you interpret these words even if you've never encountered them before. But the power of etymology extends beyond individual words. It's a secret weapon for learning new languages, particularly those within the same language family. Cognates or words that share a common etymological origin often bear similarities across languages. For instance, English mother and German mutter are cognates, as are Spanish nation and English nation. Spotting these cognates can give language learners a head start, making the task less daunting and more familiar. Furthermore, understanding the etymology of words can enhance reading comprehension, particularly when tackling complex texts. Words often carry historical and cultural baggage that can add depth to their meaning. The Greek root demo, for example, means people, and appears in words like democracy and demographics. Knowing this can provide valuable context and insight when reading about societal issues. But perhaps the most profound benefit of understanding etymology and cognates is the way it fosters a sense of global citizenship and cultural empathy. As we trace the journey of words across time and space, we realize how interconnected our languages and cultures are. We see that the words we use every day are a testament to centuries of human interaction and exchange. So, the power of etymology and cognates extends far beyond the classroom or textbook, it's a tool for enriching our vocabulary, learning new languages, deepening our understanding of texts, and connecting us to the global community. With etymology and cognates we not only understand words better but we also understand each other better. So, we've traveled through time, across cultures and within languages. What's the takeaway from this linguistic expedition? We've embarked on a journey that has taken us back to the origins of language, where we've seen firsthand how words are born, live and evolve. We've discovered that words like living entities have their own life cycles and genealogies. We've traced the ancestry of words back to their roots, unraveling the intricate family tree of language that connects us all. We've delved into the power of etymology and cognates, unearthing the hidden layers of meaning that lie beneath the surface of our everyday speech. We've seen how these tools can offer us invaluable insights into the past, illuminating the interplay of history, culture, and language. From the shared roots of English and German, to the surprising cognates between distant languages, we've explored the interconnectedness of our linguistic world. So what's the moral of the story? Words are more than just sounds and symbols. They are living relics of our shared human experience, bearing witness to our collective history and evolution. They are the threads that weave the tapestry of human culture, capturing the essence of who we are and where we come from. Understanding the origins and evolution of words is not just an academic exercise. It's a way to deepen our appreciation of language, to foster empathy and understanding across cultural divides, and to enrich our own communication. So, my friends as we wrap up this word journey, I encourage you to carry this spirit of linguistic exploration with you. Keep digging, keep questioning, keep learning, because the world of words is vast and fascinating waiting to be explored. Remember every word has a story. And in those stories we find the story of us. If you enjoyed this video please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.